Okay, let's start because we are supposed to keep the timing. So uh, thank you for being here. Before starting, I'm, I have to say that I really, uh, I really enjoy the fact that uh, Scalario is restarting. I'm really uh, glad that they asked us to do this talk. It's the first for, for us, first talk at Scala.io ever, so please be kind, we'll do our best. Uh, so who are you, Luc? So uh, my name is Luc, I live in uh, Toulouse. I'm a software engineer using Scala and ZDO uh, for Conductor. Outside of my work and uh, computer stuff, uh, I really like to bike. And you can find me on Twitter at Strokehill. Okay, and I'm Mathieu, I'm just doing the same thing, but I'm older than him. And yeah, I did a lot of free software in my life. Uh, I advocate a lot about that, so it's important to me. And you can uh, read whatever I have to say on, on Twitter. So, so yeah, we have uh, some disclaimer. So first, uh, be careful, we are going to speak a bit about front-end and UX, but why? Uh, I think as backend developer, the aim is to provide like good APA, at least in conductor, so front-end can do a good job and uh, deliver a good experience to the final user. So you have to understand what front-end uh, uh, defy are, and in order to design a good uh, APA, and it's what we are going to talk about. Okay, the, the second disclaimer is, uh, there is nothing new in what we are saying tonight. Very, very, very not, not tonight, this morning, sorry. It's <laughs> dark. <laughs> uh, so it, it's something that probably if you did actors before with uh, server sentiment or thing like that, you probably did something quite similar. So you, won't, you probably won't learn something completely new, uh, but we still think that it's uh, valuable to present the design uh, in a clean way so that you can just refer to it later or talk to your colleagues, convince people, or so on. Okay, so uh, I will, it's the part where I present a bit the company we are working for. So uh, we are working at Conductor. Conductor is doing some tools to work with uh, Apache Kafka. Kafka. Apache Kafka being uh, uh, streaming solution, uh, large-scale uh, streaming solution. Uh, uh, so the question is why... No, you can stay here for, oh, for some time. <laughs> um, the question is why people will uh, buy some tools to interact with Kafka. And uh, the truth is uh, doing some Kafka develop development is not something easy. Uh, streaming is... a one level harder, in my opinion, than databases. And so uh, when you want to know what happened in your streams, what is the data in it, and so on, and you use uh, the tool built in in Kafka, uh, yeah, it's quite hard. So we are basically building some tools for developers and help them uh, doing their job uh, with Kafka. So uh, just a few facts we, before we start with uh, the problem statement, defining a bit what Kafka is. So Kafka is something that is doing, uh, it, it's built for large-scale large publishing and consuming of message. Uh, so uh, it's like um, thousands of topic, hundreds of thousands of partition, and many millions uh, of message per second. So it's really, really, uh, uh, powerful and fast and, and large scale. Uh, however, uh, it's not so fast when you want to have meta information about your cluster, like uh, how many nodes I have, how many partition, how many data in this partition, and so on. Uh, it's not designed to be fast for that. It's designed to publish and consume things fast. So, um, this is just a screenshot of the tool we are doing, uh, just to bring some context. So the first thing people will do with our tool is connect to Kafka, have a list of topics, and have some meta information to it. So it's basically the screen everybody w will see first on the tool. So you don't want that to be slow or painful. So it's exactly what we are trying to focus for this presentation. So the preview screen, it looks like quite simple, just topic with some metadata, but uh, actually it's complicated to get all those uh, metadata about the topic using Kafka. 
So you are a graph of everything you will need to do. So E square is a request you have to do to uh, Kafka, and the row like represent like dependency between the requests. You can see there is a lot of dependency. There is things we can do in parallel, and uh, things we can't, and there is also things we can batch together. So we can like ask multiple metadata for like 30 topics. Uh, to Kafka at once. So it's quite complicated, and some data are faster to get than others, and some are like complicated and take more time to get. So what we are going to speak is how we can like work with this problematic. So okay, so uh, start with uh, the first step. So first step is uh, we are doing some GraphQL in, in conductor, so the easiest way asking for everything we need to display the first screen. So you do a single request, you wait some time, have, is your, uh, have your 20 topics and, and display everything at once. Okay. What's the downside of that uh, is that you have nothing to show to your user until you are able to display everything. So not very good user experience. So a second solution to uh, mitigate like this whole like long latency will be to have the front end to first ask to the back end, hey, give me all the topic names. And you can like start in the front end, like displaying the tabs with at least the topic names. And after for each topics, you will ask data for line and after and after. So you can have, have like at least the first line like displaying while you have like data for the next line coming. So the issue with this solution is like the perceived latency by the user is in fact uh, smaller. But the overall runtime of the solution is longer because you have no like you have to, to go back and forth to the back end with some topic names. So uh, if you look at different uh, solutions that we can uh, think of with that kind of strategy of dividing things, there's on one hand uh, the single request uh, solution, which is uh, the lower total runtime possible because uh, you ask for everything at once, so you can optimize whatever you want uh, server side to do the computation. And on the other side, it will be something that we uh, didn't even consider, which is having a single HTTP API uh, endpoint for every uh, cell of your table, basically, so you can ask for many things at once, so it will come as soon as it's ready. So in terms of latency, it could be the, the shorter, but the overall execution time is higher uh, than doing uh, all-in-ones. And uh, in between, there are trade-offs. Obviously, uh, engineering is trade-off ma mainly, so uh, you can cut things on the coarse grain that maps the best experience for your user, but it's still a trade-off. So are we able to do better than Trader for that, that's a question. And Mathieu and I, especially Mathieu, love streams. We say, okay, we have an opportunity, let's open a stream between the back end and the front end. So here's the reputation of what's going to happen. And so that's great because the back end can do all this like complex computation from the graph you see previously. And as soon as he has some data that the front end is interesting about, he can send it to the front end like what array. So we kind of have the best of the two worlds. We have like low latency and the overall runtime is not slower than the first solution. Um, yeah, it's not working. Okay, some code. Uh, let's, uh, let's see some code. Uh, so uh, here we show just how we integrate a stream uh, in a Tapir definition, so we use Tapir, which is uh, quite well known, I think, to describe uh, your APIs as REST API. And so it's just uh, some standard um, Tapir code where the only thing is when you're, you have your type, you just say it's server sent event, and then here you put your uh, service that actually returns a stream, which is defined here, but there it, it's uh, only two different um, compared to any other endpoint definition in Tapia. So it's really straightforward, and it's the same here we show even um, server sent event, but it's the same thing for um, WebSocket, or it, it's quite close, actually. So now I'm going to speak about the ADT we send in this uh, stream, so it's simple. 
So as I has two like specific um, uh, subtype in this IDT that is complete the back end send once you know like the front end got all the data I need. And the one is the first one is a list of topics. So the front end can like be prepared to display a table. And after all of those are like kind are just uh, a topic name related to a data that correspond to a sales in, uh, in the tab, for example, topic size or replication factor. Um, so here is a full implementation with, uh, of course, uh, call to method, so you don't have every details and it's, if it's in the slide, but basically you are doing exactly the different uh, nodes uh, w which were in the first graph. It's, it's a direct implementation of that, and the only difference you have uh, compared to that is this uh, Q dot send something, uh, which are the methods uh, we use to stream things. Actually, there's a small wrapper on top which provides you with a queue, and so then you can push this event in a queue. But otherwise, it's exactly the code you will do for a single request one where you compute everything. And so, yeah, they're just these tab things where you have the data and, and send them, but everything else is just the code we will have wrote, uh, written for the single request implementation. So yeah, we could uh, finish the talk here and say, great, we come with a good solution, it was easy to do, but no, it's not, it's not done because actually it's a bit more complicated because a user just don't go to the first page and stop here, you know, a, a user want to do more than that. And, um, Actually, um, so, sorry. <laughs> so, um, so a user arrives to the first page, and he will probably like filter to like filter by name to have like information about like specific topics, or go to the second page. And a solution will be like, okay, the front end could say, okay, I'm going to prefetch, for example, the second page, and we could like open a new stream. But that won't be the best solution. Why? Because Actually, between the first and the second page, for example, there is so com some common data we already fetch for the first page that we will need to, to compute data for the second page. For example, the list of topics and the logs about the topic size of the broker of the cluster. Oops, merde. Attends, je te laisse faire ce truc aujourd'hui, je suis pas sûr. What did you do? We are now have Slack, also. Yeah. Or we are at the beginning. Uh, it's not are. the right I think browser. I, uh, I think I opened a new tab. Okay. Just here, yeah. Just, just close the tab and, yeah. Okay, we are good. Um, <laughs> so, no. Sorry. <laughs> How do you deal with that? Uh, yeah, it's a point where you want to have a stateful uh, backend. So it was a t the t title of the conference. Uh, and, and so um, why do we want such a stateful thing? Because we want to keep some things that we fetch from Kafka that are slow between two requests from the front end. And uh, what we will do is keep this information for as long as the connection to the client is open, meaning that uh, if you just close your tab, open a new tab, you, you just start from scratch. There, it's not really caching, it, you already have a state uh, that is associated with what you are seeing. Um, so yeah, it's just a diagram of what are, I, I just told. Basically, you have your front end, you subscribe, you, you open a web socket, you subscribe to your back end saying, okay, I, I want information on this cluster. It, uh, information comes back as a stream, and then you can reuse this web socket, uh, sending a comment saying, Okay, give me next page now. And the front end being so smart, he already prefetched it and you can stream it back in the same uh, pipe. Um, and then we come to the re real core design of all that, which is uh, you have a stateful service with a stream input and a stream output. But uh, instead of having only uh, front end common coming in, in input and you will do something about it and return something, you actually have uh, to query Kafka 
and Kafka, when uh, you have a response, it becomes an input of your stateful things. So it's exactly how we will design the, the whole thing. And now I will let Luke present you my so, vacuum. Yeah. So um, how do you handle state uh, in stream in a in a great way? So at conductor, we, we like to use ADO, and there is this magic this magic operator on stream we, we love. It's map vacuum. So uh, basically, take an input stream, compute something with a state inside, and you get an output stream. And so how it works, so yeah, it's a graphical representation. So the idea is map vacuum, you give an initial state, you know, kind of like when you do a fold left, and you get a function that stay, take a state, take some data from the input stream, compute a new state, compute some new data for the output stream, so you put the new data in the output stream, you use a state, you compute it at the first step, and on the second step, you match it with the new data from the input stream, and so, forth, so on and so on. Okay, so we will go through the exercise of uh, executing things uh, like we were an, a code interpreter, because I, we thought it's a good way of understanding the design. Uh, we'll do it quickly because we are already late. So uh, basically, when you have the, the first uh, command com coming from the front end, um, you know that you need to load sub the list of topics and the list of brokers. So the, it's the two requests you issue, you issue to, to Kafka. And uh, in your model, in your state, you are keeping track of that. We are keeping track of the ongoing request. And then, uh, for example, Kafka, because you don't know, but Kafka comes first with the topic name instead of the broker ID. So now you know the topic names, so you can put them on the state, mark them as loaded, and you can send to the front end the topic names. And now that you have the topic names, you can uh, perform a new request to Kafka and get description for those topics. And once you've done that in the state, it's important you mark that for those topic, you already ask Kafka to get the description so you don't do that in the next uh, ste uh, step. Okay, um, so the, the second thing you have is a broker list because it was a request, that, the other request that was ongoing and then uh, you are able to, to put that in your state and you don't send anything to the front end because it, don't, it doesn't need uh, broker IDs at all but it allows you to go to the next request that will uh, compute things that uh, will eventually uh, allow to give information to the front end. And uh, lastly, for this example, uh, the Kafka comes with description about about topics foo and bar. So now we have plenty of information to put in the state and to give back to the front end replication factor or partition and so on and so on. And the last stuff that we would need to go to do is uh, to give to the front end uh, information about the number of records and to do that for each topics and each partition of each topics, we need to send a request to Kafka about getting begin offset and end offsets of the topics. So we uh, put it in the pending request. So overall we like show you like this like long sentence, uh, <laughs> long example is uh, before we, we can we can see there is like some like common operation and that, that's how we like we work the main loop of uh, inside of um, map vacuum uh, ZDO. So the idea is like we get some comments so that the input stream, so the command can either come from the front end or from Kafka. Once we got the, co the command, we can do like a simple computation to update the state. So we get the new state. When we got the new state, we can perform a diff between the new state and the old state. And sometimes with this diff, we know we have some data ready for the front end. We can give it that it didn't have so far. And also with this new state, with a sample computation, we can like uh, compute the pending request and sending to Kafka. And the idea is Kafka, once you reply, it will give the sub commands and it will go back at the beginning and there is a loop. Okay, so I will be really quick about the code. Uh, basically, here yeah, you have the two streams that are merged together as an input. The two stream being the, the response from Kafka and the commands from the front end. And then there are different steps that we were talking about. You have your input, you call map acum, 
which exist in ACA in, with other name and, and IFS2 if if also. It's, it's not specific to Zio. And you apply the input on your state, you have a new state, you, you um, then decide what are the next requests you have to issue with this uh, next call. Apply the request on your state because you have to keep track of what is loading. It's what a part of what we show previously. You compute the inf information to, to give back to um, your front end. And finally, you execute your, you, you basically create an IO, but whatever, you are executing a request and uh, send information uh, to, uh, to the front end in the, by, by using the stream. Um, so all solution has limitations. So of course, it's a slide about wh when not to use it. Um, basically, every time your uh, resource you are trying to expose through your API is fast. So basically, I know mainly two cases where it's fast, when the data source is itself is fast, or the other solution is when something is, is a bit expensive to compute or so on, you, you put in place CQRS, so you have read views, so everything is already prepared. There's no point of streaming things because the complexity added uh, to having uh, streaming, uh, dealing with state and so on, doesn't worth it at all, you know. You already have something complicated, complicated to, your, to do your CQRS. So what are the takeaway, Luke? So first, stream everything. Like streams are great, and they are easy to work on with uh, Scala and ZDO. Uh, second takeaway, uh, streams can be stateful. It's a bit shocking, but yeah, uh, it's something that I do uh, very often, being in ACA or ZDO or anything. And finally, I think Tapir and Zendio and Scala make working with streams and WebSocket and state and IDT like boringly easy, even a cat could do that. So you, you can do that at home, of course, and at your work. I think it's a very good design to provide a good user experience when your resource may be slow and, and you want a good experience anyway. Um, so uh, everything, all the code is on uh, GitHub and open source. The QR code goes directly to it. And yeah, feedback is uh, welcome on this code. You could see also all the detail and the front end which we wrote in Elm. There's a presentation later about Elm. Just go to it, it's awesome. And now I, I think it's time for a question, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. What? Our first question. Any question? Yeah. It was so clear or <laughs> so boring. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> I, w I, was I, I was thinking, uh, <laughs> trying to thank the guy that is asking yeah, the question. Yeah, I do have a question. <laughs> uh, you, you didn't really explain how is this better than caching in your case? Oh yeah, that's a, that's a good question, yeah. Um, where is the slide about caching? Yeah, it's here, okay. Uh, <laughs> we, we prepared it. Everybody knows uh, caching is the solution to performance problem, right? Um, so caching, the problem is with caching is that um, it's mainly about heuristic, you know? You, you have to decide uh, how big is the cache, how long you keep things, what are the rules for invalidation, but this rule is mainly not linked to your user. It may be just, I decide that uh, cluster-wide uh, I can share my cache, but I don't know the intent of the user. I just decided to have this information available uh, for a quick um, retrieval uh, at some point, but it's technical. It's not linked to the, to, to the intent. Uh, it's, and so uh, I definitely don't like cache. Most of the time, if I, uh, I think cache is uh, a bad implementation of CQRS, I will definitely go to CQRS instead of cache. But uh, it, it's quite the same thing. You prepare things for, for uh, having a fast uh, response for your user. The problem is, uh, do you want your dev tool to lie to you? Because um, if you list the data in your Kafka, uh, you definitely want to have the right information, exactly what is in it. In it, so uh, caching for DevTools, I think, is a no-go. I don't want my uh, PGA admin to give me 
the wrong records. You know? So uh, yeah, being in the dev tool uh, market, I def we try to avo avoid caching. But yeah, there are a lot of cases where, where it's good enough. There, I'm not uh, saying caching should never be used, but yeah. Uh, it's not something we, we try to avoid it for dev tools. Sorry, just to follow up to that, what's, yeah. what's the difference between a cache and a CQRS read view? Sorry? What would be the difference between a cache and a CQRS read view? I mean, conceptually. Ah. <laughs> it's another talk, no? <laughs> Don't you think? Uh, no, if I take, for example, what we will do in, in, in our product with Kafka, okay, so it's, it's, it's simple. Uh, um, the good implementation will be to be able to listen to Kafka and be provided with uh, events that are uh, in, in Kafka, meaning uh, I have uh, actively uh, uh, meta information streaming to me and I build bridge views uh, in advance. It will be a good implementation. Uh, caching is, is, is rather, uh, I need something, I will look if uh, somebody asked it recently and if so, yeah, I already have it. So it, it's a bit different. It's, uh, I, I try to avoid accessing to my resource. In the other case, you are uh, building uh, read views in advance for your usage based on the best possible solution to retrieve uh, data. You, c you can definitely have cache that are more than cache, that are more like CQRS than cache, but to, m to me, a cache is just a technical thing where you put data in something, you have expiration and so, and so on. It's not uh, a, a design, it's just a tool. Uh, uh, Securities is a design more than a tool, in my opinion. I should let you answer sometime. No more question about cash. Okay, we are done. Thank you very much. <laughs>